हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दीक्षा कर्नाटक यूट्यूब चैनल एंड यू आर वाचिंग के सी टी सिक्सटी आउट ऑफ सिक्सटीन फिजिक्स सीरीज वेर आई एम ट्राइंग टू हेल्प यू टू गेट योर ड्रीम सिक्सटी मार्क्स इन के सेट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव फिजिक्स एग्जाम एंड इफ यू आर फॉलोइंग आवर चैनल आवर कोर्स फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग देन यू शुड नो दैट के सेट पी यू वन पार्ट सॉरी पी यू टू पार्ट इज ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड एंड करेंटली वी आर रिवाइजिंग द चैप्टर्स फ्रॉम पी यू वन बट वी आर ओनली डूइंग द पार्ट्स विच आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन के सेट एग्जाम सो इट विल बी इन एक्सक्लूसिव चैप्टर रिव्यू फॉर के सेट एग्जाम ओनली एंड इट विल बी अ ब्रीफ कंसाइज चैप्टर डिस्कशन सो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द चैप्टर वी शुड ऑल्सो इन्फॉर्म यू दैट एवरी संडे वी आर डूइंग के पी एल के सेट प्रीमियर लीग दिस इज फॉर फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री एंड मैथ्स ओके सो दिस वीक ऑल्सो फॉर गेटिंग द क्वेश्चन पेपर वाट यू हैव टू डू यू हैव टू ज्वाइन आवर व्हाट्सएप चैनल द लिंक इज गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन गो टू to that channel click on the uh, notification icon so that you don't miss out on any notification posted on our channel and today we are going to discuss a new chapter work energy and power uh, completely only for k set so let's start with the uh, content we will start with work and energy so we will discuss what is work what is energy what is their relationship then we will discuss work done by a variable force uh, somewhat important then we will discuss about power very important then collision collision is very important from this chapter uh, from the perspective of previous year question so collision also we are going to discuss uh, so let's start with work and energy okay so what is work work is done by a force on the body over a certain displacement so if i have to say in a mathematical way work is basically given by f dot x okay if you are writing in terms of vectors then f dot x is the work okay sometimes we write f it is it we write it as fx cos theta okay why suppose i have an object it is moving in this direction and i am applying a force suppose in this direction okay then the angle between them is theta and displacement is happening along this direction so this is fx cos theta basically gives you the projection along the displacement okay so fx uh, cos theta gives you the displacement uh, sorry work done in the direction of motion okay now there is a, a one more important thing that you have to remember that change in the kinetic energy we will discuss briefly about kinetic energy but for now you have to remember that change in kinetic energy of a particle is equal to the work done on it by the net force so if i say the change in kinetic energy delta ek okay so delta ek so if if the object is suppose our object is moving okay if you do some work on it then its kinetic energy will change how much it will change this is exactly equals to the work done by the force acting on it okay so if it this uh, kinetic energy is decreasing that means the work done uh, is against the motion that is uh, frictional force if uh, you are uh, applying some external force then work done will be positive so kinetic energy will increase okay so this is the basic uh, fundamental uh, law this is called work energy theorem okay based on this some questions may come so that's why this is there now let's move on to the next part that no work force what is no work force so for the force and displacement are uh, mutually perpendicular the work done is zero so we have seen that work done is basically given by fx cos theta now suppose uh, you uh, the object is moving in this direction and the force is applying on this direction then what is the angle angle will be 90 degrees that is they are perpendicular to each other now what will be the work done in this case fx cos 90 now we know that cos 90 is zero so the work done will be zero this type of force is called uh, no work force okay for example there are very many popular example one person carrying a weight okay in his head and uh, moving so uh, the coolie in your you see in your railway stations so that guy is actually uh, applying no work force similarly the earth is rotating around sun okay there is a gravitational attraction force between earth and the sun okay this gravitational attraction force between earth and the sun is actually a no work force because earth if you consider the motion of earth around the sun we are almost uh, rotating in a circular orbit 
ओके दिस इज अर्थ एंड द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन ऑफ अर्थ इज इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड द ग्रेविटेशनल फोर्स इज इन दिस डायरेक्शन okay that is why this force is a no work force right so there are many uh, common example of no work force sometimes they might give you which of the following is not uh, uh, not doing any work so that's why this concept i have given it here okay no work force there are some other cases also where x is equals to 0 and sometimes f equals to 0 in that case also work is zero but that is obvious if there is no displacement then work done will definitely be zero okay but no work force is only when the force and displacement both are happening okay for example here the earth is rotating so earth is getting displaced as well as there is a force of gravity acting on it both things are uh, acting but they are not uh, doing any work because the, the uh, respective displacement and in in this case the gravitational force they are perpendicular mutually perpendicular that is why there is no uh, work is being done okay now kinetic energy let's look into the formula for kinetic energy i hope everyone remembers that kinetic energy is given by half mv square now there are two things that you need to remember to solve problems quickly that momentum generally denoted by small p is given by mv okay so we try to find the relationship between the kinetic energy and momentum if you don't remember this if you uh, start from here that is also fine but uh, sometimes if you remember the formula directly okay it will save some time for you otherwise it is well very fine if you are using these two equations to find uh, and solve one problem based on we will see one problem after this so if you are using both the equations to find uh, the problem to solve the problem that is fine but sometimes it is essential uh, especially when you are uh, you are having less time question paper may be little lengthy so if you remember the formula then it you can solve it just using one line right so now what is m, m square v square m square v square basically you can see that p square equals to m square v square so what i have done i have you taken this equation then i have multiplied m in the numerator and divided in the denominator right so basically what is happening this this is ba balancing each other so basically we are rewriting the same equation right so we can write this as p square by m right so from there i can write this as uh, p square equals to 2 m e k okay we have used the same equation in uh, dual nature of radiation and matter if you remember if you recall so this this is the origin of the equation so momentum is nothing but square root of 2 mek okay this is a important relation to remember for any competitive exam this equation is valid for je this equation you will have to remember for je you have to remember for neat okay and for kset of course okay let's see one question that came in uh, previous year 2014 okay the kinetic energy of a body of mass 4 kg and momentum 6 newton per second will be so they have asked you to find the kinetic energy so they have asked you to find the kinetic energy okay momentum is given 6 newton seconds okay and uh, mass is also given mass is given as 4 okay so we know that in our previous discussion that uh, momentum and kinetic energy is related using this equation okay so if you want to direct find the kinetic energy then what you have to do you have to use this equation okay or you can start from here square uh, the p square then you can apply it that is also fine but we will directly use this formula because we have already uh, just derived it right so ek is nothing but half p square by m right so it will be half p square is 6 square that is 36 6 is a 36 by m m is 4 okay so uh, it will be 18 18 then it will be 9 by 2 that is 4.5 okay 4.5 joules is the kinetic energy so it is an easy problem okay so if you remember the formula directly if you apply the formula directly then your life will be slightly easier 
otherwise basic formulas basic equations are good enough okay so remembering the formula is not essential but it is handy when the time is limited and you want to solve more questions in less time okay so that you have a time maybe for a revising the questions to revisit the questions which i you might feel it is difficult so those things will help you if you remember the equations if you remember the formulas that's it okay now potential energy potential energy is when you keep an object say at an height h from the ground okay then there will be a potential energy uh, mass m so what is the potential energy potential energy is mgh there is one more thing if you have a spring of constant k and if you compress it by say a distance x then the potential energy of the system will be kx okay spring constant k newton per meter and if you compress it or if you stretch it okay based on what you are doing there will be sign difference some cases it will be plus some cases it will be minus but uh, potential energy can be uh, there for a uh, string also now remember that potential energy can be negative whereas kinetic energy can never be negative okay kinetic energy what was the kinetic energy expression kinetic energy expression was half mv square right so m mass cannot be negative mass of an object cannot be negative velocity can be negative based on the direction but when you square it okay the negative even if it is negative the square of velocity will be positive right now in this case uh, m can be uh, or m is always positive okay assuming g is always positive h can be positive or negative for example if you consider this h to be positive if you go under the ground okay in that case h will be negative right if you dig inside the earth so in that case potential energy will be negative right so you have to remember that uh, for to define potential energy you have to define some where where potential energy is actually zero for our day to day life we assume that the potential energy of the ground is zero okay if you go up your potential energy increases if you go down your potential energy uh, decreases okay so potential energy can be negative kinetic energy cannot be negative now let's move on to the next part the total mechanical energy of a system is conserved if the forces doing work on it are conservative so if the forces are acting on it are conservative then total mechanical energy of the system will be conserved so what are the examples of conservative forces few examples of conservative forces we already know gravitational force okay next is electromagnetic force these are conservative force any example of non conservative force yes non conservative so this is these are conservative forces okay so let me say these are conservative forces okay first obviously our enemy okay next is viscosity viscous forces they are also uh, non conservative forces okay any drag force okay when you try to move in an uh, fluid okay there will be a drag force so that is also a, a non conservative force whereas gravity and um, electromagnetic forces are conservative force if <coughs> no friction is present only gravity is present then uh, under the motion of the gravity the total energy will always remain conserved for our uh, normal problem solving cases we generally consider this is a conservative force and we apply but uh, there will be some specific cases we will see in case of collision specially there are cases where uh, the force can be non conservative and uh, energy will not be conserved okay so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so uh, generally there are two types of conservation conservation of energy okay that will be conserved only when the force is conservative and there is conservation of momentum so conservation of momentum was there in laws of motion uh, there was no question based on conservation of momentum came but you should remember that momentum will always be conserved okay so momentum will always be conserved whereas energy will be conserved only if the forces are conservative momentum will always be conserved momentum of a system of an isolated system obviously will be conserved
okay but energy may be conserved may not be conserved if the forces are conservative energy will be conserved if the energy forces are not conservative then energy will not be conserved okay simple now work done by a variable force if the force is variable what is the meaning of force variable so generally when we solve problem we say the force is uh, given by uh, 5 newton force is given by 10 newton okay if the force is not uh, constant that force is varying with time so for example here the force is varying with time it is a function of x okay you know the function right so fx can be uh, fx equals to x square plus x plus c this is a kind of function right so in this case as x changing the force will change right so if this is a this is instead of writing a function if i say this is actually a force okay so if i say this is force then as you are changing x x means as you are moving along the x direction okay the force will change each point will have different force now how can you calculate the work done if the force is not constant the fx cos theta formula that i told you is for constant force right now if the force is changing in that case what you have to do you have to either do an integration if the function is directly given you can do the integration fx dx okay for individual points each point you can calculate fx dx or there is one more smart idea if the graph is given you can calculate the area under the graph that is basically an integration i hope you have learned the basics of integration basics of integration definite integration means area under the graph right so basically area under the graph if we can calculate the area under the graph then we can calculate the work done so in the fx versus x graph okay fx versus x graph if we calculate the area under the graph then we will be able to calculate the work done by the force this is the easier way okay we will see one problem uh, based on that but that is after we learn about power okay so this is one of the way to calculate the work done now let's see what is power power is defined power okay how much power you have okay so it's not about the uh, local power he has he is a powerful person no that power is different here we are talking about power in terms of physics okay power is defined as the time rate at which work is done or energy is transferred okay so suppose you are lifting water from uh, some well okay or you are uh, climbing up the stair okay uh, by uh, with your uh, um, backpack at your bag uh, back okay so if you are uh, carrying some heavy weight in your bag and you are uh, climbing a stair definitely you are doing some work now how fast you can climb you can climb say in uh, 10 minutes you can climb from uh, ground floor to third floor someone can climb in 2 minutes from ground floor to third floor okay so he will be much faster than you so he will have much more power than you so power is basically how fast you can do the work okay so power is nothing but work done work done divided by time okay so how much time it, you are taking and how much work you are doing so basically suppose for example uh, you can solve a problem a case set problem in uh, say 60 seconds someone can solve the same problem in 10 seconds okay so both of you are doing the same amount of work to solve the problem but who is solving in 10 seconds he is definitely more powerful uh, brain in terms of brain power of his brain will be his or her brain will be stronger than you right so power is basically the capacity of doing work in uh, unit time okay so how fast you are doing the work how fast you are transferring the energy that is the power now let's see one problem this is from case 2020 for exam okay a particle of mass 500 g is at rest so here we will apply both uh, the graphical concept as well as the concept of uh, power okay so a particle of mass 500 g is at rest it is free to move along a straight line so the particle is free to move along a straight line and uh, the power delivered to the particle varies with time according to this so power delivered to the particle varies here it is not x axis it is time axis okay so individually each time you are getting a different different power okay varies with the time according to the following graph 
द मोमेंटम ऑफ द पार्टिकल एट टी इज इक्वल टू फाइव एस ओ माई गॉड नाउ इट इज कंप्लीटली इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन सो दिस इज नॉट वन सिंगल कंसेप्ट क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू अप्लाई मल्टीपल कंसेप्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन दिस केस इफ यू सी वॉट इज द एरिया अंडर द ग्राफ वॉट इज द एरिया अंडर द ग्राफ यू कैन यूज ट्राइंगल एंड रेक्टेंगल फॉर्मूला टू कैलकुलेट टोटल एरिया अंडर द ग्राफ दिस एरिया plus this area this is the total area under the graph so if you are calculating the area under graph you cannot consider only this thing you have to consider the entire entire thing right so what is the total uh, power delivered okay so you can calculate what is the area first of all let us understand in case of power versus time graph what is the area represents so here area is basically power times time right power is along x, uh, y axis time is along x axis so area is basically power into time you are doing so what is power power is work done divided by time so if you find the area under the graph in this case you are calculating the total work done so area under the graph for a power versus time graph is nothing but total work done now in the uh, uh, part where we have learned that delta ek that is change in kinetic energy equals to work done right this is the work energy theorem now initially it was at rest so initially at rest means initial kinetic energy was zero so final kinetic energy will be equals to ek so Z ek minus zero equals to w so ek itself will be w right now you have to calculate the momentum to calculate the momentum you have to use this formula 2m ek okay so all the formulas all the concepts that we have learned is coming here so only thing first you have to calculate the work done by calculating the area under the graph if you calculate the area under the graph then you can calculate the uh, kinetic energy then kinetic energy will be equals to the work done by, by virtue of work energy theorem and then you can calculate the momentum so let's calculate the uh, work done first so what will be the work done in this case so first this this part so observe carefully what is this height this is 2 what is the length length is 5 so what is the total uh, area of this part so total area of this part say this is 1 so this part is 1 this part is 2 okay so work done equals to first we will calculate this area 2 times 5 right so this is the work done for this much time okay so now what is the work done for this triangular area triangular area what is the what is this height this height is 2 to 8 so 2 to 8 means this height will be obviously uh, 8 minus 2 that is 6 okay and the base will remain same base will remain same as 5 right so what is the area of a triangle triangles area is half half um base into height right so what is the total work done here total work done is 5 to the 10 okay then 3 3 fives are 15 so total work done is 25 okay so total work done we have calculated 25 now put that work done value is equals to kinetic energy this is the work energy theorem okay now put that value in this equation p equals to 2 now what is 500 gram means you cannot use 500 gram in this equation why because this is in is not in si unit so 500 grams is actually equals to 0.5 kilograms okay so you have to put 0.5 here okay and <coughs> ek is 25 Okay, so two times point five is one. Two times point five is one, right? Point uh, five is one uh, uh, by two. So two times point five is one. Now what is square? Then you can simply say this is one. Okay, so only we have to do find the square root of twenty five. So what is the square root of twenty five? Simple five. So the answer will be five newton second. Okay, five newton second. Okay. so if you 
do the step by step process then you will never be wrong but you have to understand this problem this is a not so simple problem okay first you have to calculate the area under the graph that area is work done and that work done is equals to the kinetic energy by the virtue of work energy principle now you know the relationship between kinetic energy and momentum then you can calculate the momentum okay so you, the question is completely uh, if you read it first time and if you have not solved similar question the question will completely seems like okay this is uh, is not my uh, cup of tea this is too hard for me tumba hard this is not tumba hard this is tumba simple okay now let's move on to the next part collision what is collision there are two types of collision okay uh, collision means what collision means when you are hitting one object with another object two objects are hitting that is called collision okay so basically an accident okay one car is coming from right side one car is coming from right left side and they are colliding okay so the, that is an accident similarly we if you play carom or if you play billiard or there are many games where we uh, use the concept of collision okay where uh, we intentionally hit uh, the um, pucks with our striker so that they can uh, run right so that they are also part of collision okay now there are two types of collision elastic collision and inelastic collision what is elastic collision in case of elastic collision both kinetic energy and momentum are conserved okay both of these two things are conserved kinetic energy is conserved and momentum are uh, is also conserved momentum will always be conserved okay and in inelastic collision inelastic collision means where uh, only momentum is conserved kinetic energy is not conserved so they will ask you in case of inelastic collision which of the following is conserved okay so they will ask both kinetic energy and uh, momentum is conserved only kinetic energy is conserved only momentum is conserved none of the, the energy is conserved none of the quantity is conserved okay so you have to be careful in case of inel inelastic collision only momentum is conserved so no matter what is the type of collision momentum will always be conserved okay only thing that is not conserved is kinetic energy based on what type of con uh, uh, collision it is if it is an elastic collision then uh, kinetic energy will also be conserved if it is an elastic inelastic collision then kinetic energy will not be conserved so for example if you have seen playing cricket okay when a batsman we say that batsman has timed the ball well what is the meaning of the timing the ball well timing the ball well means where the collision is perfect almost perfectly elastic the exact perfect elastic collision is very rare in nature so when the collision is uh, almost perfectly elastic then kinetic energy is also conserved okay and you transfer the momentum perfectly okay there is no other thing that is happening so now <coughs> let's see one problem from uh, kset exam a ball of mass 0.2 kg is thrown vertically down from a height of 10 meters okay so ball of mass 0.2 kg is dropped from a height of 10 uh, meter okay now <coughs> it collides with the floor so ball collides with the floor okay and loses 50 percent of the energy so what is there so you are not dropping it you are throwing it right so there is a difference if you drop it it will drop and it will not come back to the original height but if you take the ball and if you draw uh, if you throw it downwards okay so basically at the beginning you have given it some uh, downward velocity okay initially you have given it some downward velocity okay and what is the question after the collision 50 percent of the energy is lost 50 percent of the total energy before collision whatever total energy it had was lost due to the collision okay so basically it's an in inelastic collision okay and then it rises back to the height to the back to the value of its same height so after collision it now rises back to the same height even after losing 50 percent of the energy right the initial velocities interesting question so 
you have thrown it with some initial velocity downward and after colliding with the uh, ground it again comes back to the same height right so what is suppose uh, initially the height was 10 meter okay initial velocity say v okay what is the total initial energy total initial energy is we know that total energy is nothing but sum of total mechanical energy sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy right so total uh, energy is always kinetic energy plus potential energy what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is half m v square right what is potential energy potential energy is m g h this is the total energy of the system when you throw it down okay just before collision what will be that energy of the object just before collision it will have the same energy okay because there are no air no we are not considering any other uh, data uh, <coughs> damping forces so it will have the same energy but after collision it is losing 50 percent of the energy so after collision what is the final energy final energy is 50 percent of the initial energy right what is the meaning of that so it will be 50 percent 50 percent means 50 by 100 of initial energy <coughs> that is half of initial energy 50 percent loss means it will be halved okay so now final energy after it have this final energy say ef it reaches here it reaches the same height so at this point what is its total energy it should be ef again because conservation of energy right so it will have again uh, the same energy with which it started uh, coming back again right now but we know that from the concept of potential energy the energy of this ball at this point should be mgh again right now it it is not going up anywhere so its total energy should be equals to mgh so this ef should be equals to mgh right so total ef should be mgh and this should be equals to half of ei now let's put these values so ef equals to half ei so ef equals to half ei or mgh equals to half of half m v square plus mgh okay now if you see all the terms have m in it okay so m will be cancelled so in between there is a plus sign so m will come common and they will cancel now let's uh, do the cross multiplication so it will be 2 g h equals to half v square plus g h right now do another cross uh, now take half v square equals to 2 g h minus g h equals to g h now what will be the relation so half v square equals to g h sorry sorry half v square that means we can write this as v square by 2 right so v square by 2 equals to g h or you can write this as v square equals to 2 g h okay or you can say v equals to square root of 2 g h right so v equals to square root of 2 g h let's put the values 2 times g is 10 meter per second okay and what is h height is 10 uh, meters okay so it will be uh, square root of 10 of uh, 10 multiplied 10 so that will be nothing but 10 and square root of 2 so square root of 2 10 root 2 okay now if you check the options now nowhere they have given 10 root 2 so what we have to do we have to simplify it further so root 2 means what root 2 means 1.414 so multiply with 10 you will get 14.14 okay meter per second so 14.14 is not given but 14 is given so we can easily guess the correct answer is option a 14 meter per second 
okay so do solve this type of questions so that your mathematical ability improves over time and we will be back with the previous year question paper from the chapter okay i will be trying to solve 15 questions at least from this chapter so that your uh, analytical and uh, uh, mathematical ability improves okay so this is the it for today's lecture and uh, all the lectures that i am doing is currently available in our channel in the physics uh, 60 out of 16 physics 2025 uh, uh, playlist you can visit our playlist you can check all the lectures that i have done so far okay so you can check there and uh, learn from there and whatever comments you have you can post that in the uh, respective videos i will check and i will try to answer them and i will be back with the new chapter pyqs tomorrow but before going you have to uh, join our whatsapp channel there i uh, we are posting all the latest updates whenever we are doing any updates on our channel for example we did uh, pu midterm revision so if you are not part of our whatsapp group then you might have missed those uh, videos and obviously you have to subscribe to our channel if you have not yet done so and i'll be back with previous year question paper tomorrow till then bye